Hello everyone, this is Naser and I'm a senior solution consultant here at ServiceNow. I specialize in security operations. I've been making videos in the past couple of weeks to go over some of the different features uh, within ServiceNow that adds value to your implementation. Now, walking through these things, we get asked a lot of different questions, um, a lot of great questions. And when we are having a conversation with a customer, we want to actually demonstrate how easy it is uh, to do the different uh, features that is going to add value to their operations. Now, before I get started and talk about our topic for today, uh, if you don't mind, I'm just going to quickly pull up my email uh, because I just wanted to check some of the different emails that I received. Um, I was just busy the past week going to uh, our amazing su successful school and didn't have the time to check my inbox. So let's go ahead and pull up my inbox over here. This uh, looks like a very urgent uh, message coming from an um, individual that sounds very familiar. I've actually worked with a NACER here at ServiceNow before and he was great at his job. So it must be a trustworthy email. Um, we can see it even has the external email um, here. Uh, this is very weird given that it is signed to be from ServiceNow. So I wonder how did that come to be? Uh, we can see that I'm being asked here to provide my social security number uh, to be able to receive my W-2 form. Uh, it is signed from the new employee in HR. Um, now, this is obviously a failed attempt at simulating what a phishing email would look like. Uh, but why I wanted to bring out this email is to show you how we can basically click on report fish here uh, as the user who received this email who suspected it to be um, a phishing email and did the right thing of reporting it um, and the view of the actual security analyst who is working on the uh, different security incidents that they are receiving who are utilizing ServiceNow instances for that. I know that here at ServiceNow internally, uh, we drink our own champagne and we utilize security incident response module. Uh, so the user will probably receive something or work on something very similar to what you're seeing right now. This is the security incident workbench where basically they get to see all of the different security incidents within their queue. If they open it up, they would be able to see the actual security incident and all of the different details within that security incident. So the uh, individual on our security team is gonna basically receive an incident very similar to this. Rather than having um, the name here be not my name, uh, that will be changed on the actual incident uh, that I submit to reflect my uh, name. Uh, it will also capture a lot of information that we're not seeing on the screen right now. So for example, if we scroll down, uh, we can see the threat lookup results automatically captured from the email, like the IP address, if there are any attachment hashes, um, the domain, all of this is automatically pulled out from the email. And we can, what we can also notice here is that the system automatically categorized this as a phishing attempt and it indicated this the source of how we received this incident uh, on our instance was through an email. Another thing that we can do or have automatically done for us is the ability to associate an appropriate playbook to the incident that we've received. So there is a workflow on the back end that automatically recognizes that this is a phishing category. We have a phishing playbook. So let's put one and one together and let's give the analyst the appropriate steps needed to remediate the security incident at hand. Now, this is not our topic for today. Our topic for today is how we can actually build out what I'm going to refer to as an integration of reporting fish and how we can basically create an email where we'll be able to forward the information uh, from the specific email or any user um, reported email phishing um, and how that is going to be parsed on the ServiceNow instance that gives us something very similar to what you're seeing right now and the ability of associating it with a playbook automatically. And in later stages, we will probably cover how we can create different playbooks and how we can specify what different steps and tasks go within the different playbooks. Now let's go ahead and get started. 
Now, the first step that is required for you to do would be to actually create the email on which we're going to be forwarding the uh, phishing attempt uh, to. So this is something that you'd have to do on your own outside of the ServiceNow platform. Um, you can utilize your own domain. You can use a Gmail, Hotmail. It really doesn't matter um, as long as you have an email where we can forward the phishing incident to. So if you have that email ready and for the sake of today, uh, I'm going to create a hypothetical email called security at servicenow.com where I'm going to be using to basically forward a specific incidents to. Um, we're going to go ahead and navigate to the filter navigator and look for email processing. What we are going to do is create an ingestion rule. So I'm going to go ahead to the ingestion rules and I'm going to create a new one. You can name it whatever you want. Um, if maybe you want to create one for security incidents, if you maybe want to create another one for um, phishing campaigns, or if you want to create another one for ITSM, uh, that is all possible. Um, or you can have a bunch of different emails really. But today we just want to do to rule. Uh, you can name it whatever naming convention you want. Um, order, it doesn't matter. Um, it matters if you have a bunch of different um, emails, but in the case of today's example, I'm just going to keep it the same. Um, I want this to be to and is security. Let's add phishing. Mm. At servicenow.com. I can save. update and now as you can see we have the new created ingestion rule which is basically uh, every time we forward an email to this specific email um, a new incident ticket should be created uh, but let's go ahead and jump into the next step to actually understand um, what information we're going to be capturing from the email so what are the information that we are capturing from these emails that we're forwarding to security phishing at servicenow.com to specify that, um, again, we navigate to email processing. Um, this time we're going to go to the user reported phishing properties. And as you can see here, um, I'm being told that this record is a security support common application, but I'm currently in global. I'm going to go ahead and switch that to um, the specific uh, scoped application. And then I can specify or identify the start of the email header content and the end of the email header content. Uh, this way I'm telling the platform exactly what information I want to capture. Um, we also have the option of creating a child incident um, on a security incident because it is a phishing attempt. Um, this is optional depending on how you want to implement, so it's a yes or no. Uh, display phishing email content in HTML format, that is also a matter of preference. Um, so I'd leave it to that. So we, what we can also do is we create a um, comma separated list of email headers to be stored. Uh, if no value is specified, all the email headers are stored. Um, so again, this is a matter of preference. This is a, where you go to just uh, specify what information is going to be captured from the email. So what is happening now? What happens after we capture the email and we register what is its header and when it ends and all of that? Um, you're gonna hate me for saying this, but we're gonna rely on the ServiceNow magic. Uh, ServiceNow magic means that we are gonna be utilizing a workflow. So let me take you a step back. Um, as soon as we do, um, or we forward the email to the email that we've created, we ingest the information from it. The first step is that an email record is going to be created in the ses underscore email table. The second thing is that we're gonna create the phishing email um, inbound action runs. So the inbound action that we've created is going to run. Third thing is that when it's been identified as a phishing email, that phishing email record is going to be created in the SN underscore SI underscore phishing underscore email. Um, this is all boring. Where is the service now magic in all of this? So the service, ma the service now magic is going to be within the flow designer. Um, if we navigate to all, and just type the word flow designer. It's under process um, automation. Um, it's usually opens up in a new tab. If we go into all of the flows that we have and look for a flow called transform, here we go. So out of the box, we actually provide a bunch of different uh, workflows. You can see that this is the one that is currently active. So what is that specific workflow and what does it do? What it does is that it basically 
looks for the email that we've ingested and looks for all of the information within that email uh, that are going to be created within the security incident record. So we can actually actually specify what information we want to capture from that email and what information we want to modify um, if there is maybe another naming convention to one of the um, fields in our record we can um, do all of that from here. This is again out of the box so I'm not going to go into greater details of what happens here uh, but you can just go through it and modify whatever needs to be modified to align with your own organization objective um, or you can add information or remove information. Let's go ahead and do a quick recap. What you're looking at right now is the security incident that was created um, utilizing the flow that we have out of the box to transform phishing email records to a security incident record. So what started as, as a phish email, if we open this, we can actually uh, navigate to that specific record. This is the information that has been ingested and captured from the um, header or the body of the email uh, that was forwarded to the email that we've created. This is the security incident that is uh, transformed through the flow. From that record, we can notice some of the information was imported from the um, email itself. Um, other information was imported from other parts of the platform. Like for example, the risk score here could have been calculated either through the CMDB or through the severity of the email or if uh, some of the threat intelligence information in that email uh, were scanned through a third party and were flagged as a malicious email, this could also affect the risk score. Um, the incident details, all of that is captured from the body of the email. We can see all of the activities. This is just a basic ServiceNow um, feature. And scrolling down, we can see all of the information that is normally associated with a security incident. So what started as a simple email where we click on report fish will end up to be a security incident on your ServiceNow instance. Now, one thing I did not mention is the setup of the report fish button. This is something that has to be set up using the Microsoft Outlook plugin um, that can be found through documentation on either the ServiceNow website or through the uh, Microsoft specific plugin uh, documentation website. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this recording. I hope I was able to provide you with more value from your ServiceNow uh, security operation investment. And I look forward to seeing you on future ServiceNow recordings. Have a great rest of your day.